You are tuned into Community Chat. My name is Kevin Tachi. I will be your host for the next 30 or so minutes. Uh, what we like to use this newly created program to do is as a vehicle to talk about the things that are going on in and around the community, the town of Abington, to serve the residents, to inform you, to have conversations on topics that are relevant to the times, uh, whether it's upcoming elections, whether it's a local issue that needs some form of discussion. It could be a, a new industry. It could be someone new uh, to town with a, an idea. It doesn't matter. The idea is, is it's, a, it's a, a forum for someone to come and have a conversation, have dialogue. Today, uh, joining me, we're privileged to have a gentleman who is an award-winning documentarian. Gentleman has won an Emmy. Uh, and it's also worth noting is that while we're talking about the big prize, it's also, uh, he, he is the president of an organization that has won five consecutive uh, awards for the documentaries that they've put together. Uh, joining us right now, director, filmmaker, and president of Newbie Productions. We have Newbie Rateau joining us. Newbie, welcome to the program. Kevin, it's always an honor to be on. I appreciate all the good work that you're doing. So uh, thanks for having me on. So it's worth noting, we'll kind of run down the list of things, some of the great films that you have done. Uh, I know you've, you've received accolades, critically acclaimed for things like uh, your documentary, Stepping Up, documentary on fatherhood, um, Out of Bounds, sports uh, when it comes to uh, the inner city, uh, and protect, serve, and care, uh, you know, community policing. And during the time of your filming, we saw a lot of unrest in regards to community relations, especially with African-Americans and law enforcement. Uh, we'll also talk a little bit later on in our conversation here, you, the new film you're doing, which I think is going to also gain you uh, lots of, uh, uh, not only awards, but I think, uh, I think folks are really, it's gonna resonate with people. I am you, we'll talk a little bit about that. But at the time of this conversation that you and I are having, Newby, uh, we're, we're, we're in the midst of observing Independence Day. Um, I'm going to pose a rhetorical question to you, but I want to get your take on it. Yep. Are all Americans free? Um, yeah, I would say so. I think Americans, all Americans are free in terms of, you know, um, you know having, having different rights. Now, do all Americans have equal advantages to get those certain benefits? No, but all Americans free? Absolutely, I, you know, I, I can't, you know, in 2020, you know, if I tell a slave hypothetically that I'm not free and they're chained up, you know, I might not look that good, but I would say yes, all Americans are free, yes. Okay, um, recently, you're besides someone who does like me, you're someone who is a, you, your expertise is in multiple forms of media. You're a multimedia giant here locally. You did a podcast uh, with a good friend of ours. I think you did it with Lynn Smith, if I'm correct, right? Yes, yes. Um, and the, the theme of this was about uh, what would the slaves, uh, what would the, what, when we're coming on upon the Independence Day holiday, what would slaves think of the 4th of July? What, what is it to the slaves? Or what would it be to slaves when you reference the 4th of July? Talk well, about you know, when I worked with Lynn Smith, we did um, a podcast, a Frederick Douglass reading that he did, uh, you know, almost 170 years ago. Uh, what does, uh, he did in 1852. And I thought it was a beautiful, beautiful um, reading. And I, I, I think... You know, in terms of you know, what what would a, what would a slave or them be what they be thinking now? The progress has been enormous in a short period of time, um, but there's still work to be done. And I think there's a lot of things that Frederick Douglass says in his reading 
that really apply to today. I mean, he talks about things that are very important now, such as voter suppression, okay? Um, he, ta he talks about, you know, being able to be charged uh, properly on different things. You know, he was saying how, you know, a slave could do something as opposed to a, a free white man could do something and the charges will be um, completely different. So I think, um, you know, in terms of, you know, to go, go back to your question, are we free? Yes. But I think the, the, there's still some advantages that people in this country have that allow you to prosper financially. Um, and, and, that, and that helps you, you know, do things like own property and things like that, that really put people, um, certain races, above others in terms of progress. You know, this, this country, as we, we talk about Independence Day, it sought its freedom from England in the late 1770s. Um, but it took another hundred years to, to free those who were, who were owned, you know, who were slaves. Um, in your opinion, uh, is this something that, that Black Americans question regarding the process of freedom, freedom for all Americans? Yeah, I think, um, you know, it, it's, the way I see it is that, you know, we really haven't had a full, two generations. We're still going on one generation of, of people having full rights. We're talking about the, the Voting Rights Act of 1964, okay? That's really the first time they kind of had, you know, equal rights to do different things. So um, the progress is, if you look at that, and where we are now in 2020, just in one generation, the progress has been extremely quick. And it's been awesome. But that doesn't mean be satisfied. That's actually a bad thing that took to 1964 to get in That's actually a horrible thing. In terms of the African American and, 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 and the progress, it's a good thing the amount of how fast we've been able to achieve that progress. But in terms of having free and equal rights, it's one thing to be free. Beautiful, I'm free. Okay, I'm free to eat anything I want. I'm free to buy whatever I want. That's beautiful. Now, do I have the equal access? That's, that's the new fight is the access to have different things and different advantages. So when we talk about freedom, um, I, I guess really is what's the definition of freedom? If, if, it's, if it's the ability to make choices on your own, yes. But access, I think, is, is just as important as freedom. You know, it's interesting, you know, it, it seems as though our country has, you know, we, we, we've tried to build, build our history on the foundation of, of freedom and freedom for one and all. Uh, and, you know, we're, we're talking about, you know, um, uh, the black man in, in, in as far as the freedoms and Independence Day. But interesting enough, you know, you talk about the freedoms to be able to do things. Look how, look how long it took for the women's suffrage, um, uh, uh, their rights, the movement for them to be able to vote. It took until the mid 19th century for women to be able to vote. What is it with our country when it comes to doing the right thing? I, I feel that we, we promote that we do the right thing all the time, but do we? Well, I think um, in terms of that, I mean, I, let me put it this way. I don't think that we are a, a country that is racist in terms of i don't like you because you're black i think we're past that okay now listen there's some jerks out there of course but when we talk about a system i don't think the and, it, and we just have to be honest with ourselves I, I think the the american system was not meant to benefit women or minorities it was meant to benefit free white men who own property and i mean that's just a, that's just a fact of the truth so i think that's why it took longer for women and minorities to get those rights because it wasn't meant for them. Now the constitution, um, you know, is, is, is meant for them. Martin Luther King, King always say, you know, you know, just do what you say on paper, you know. Um, but what they said on paper wasn't originally designed for me. It, was, it wasn't designed for women. But what they said on paper um, is, is something that we're always working towards. But the reason why it's taken so long is because originally it wasn't meant for women. You know, even the women's suffrage movement, I mean, in 1920, I mean, black women still didn't get the right to vote until the 60s. So even then, you know, it, 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 it wasn't for everybody. 
Um, I, I think the beautiful thing now, Kevin, which I love, and, and I'm, I'm a teacher too, I'm really proud of that, I teach film, is that I think this generation, Kevin, is more accepting than any generation I've ever seen when it comes to, you know, people who are transgender, gay, black, white. I just think they're very accepting. Um, so I have a lot of hope with this generation. I see it with my students every day. I mean, you know, not liking some color, they color their skin, or you know, I, I guess it happens occasionally, you know, around the world, around the country, obviously. There's, there's bad apples out there. But in general, I think this next generation is really moving in the, in, the, in the right direction. We're seeing it right now in the news. I mean, we're seeing a lot of young people really in the charge. And what's interesting is, so basically what you're saying is, is you feel that our country, generationally, we are evolving. We're, we're evolving and we're evolving in the right direction. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you this. You look back six years ago, 2014, Mm -hmm. um, and we saw the outrage with the shooting of, of a 19-year-old Michael Brown in Ferguson, Missouri. Um, it sparked protest um, for change in this country. Here we are in 2020. We have rallies. We're having protests. Has anything really changed? Yes. Um, and, and let me tell you why, because I, I specifically remember those protests with Mike Brown and around that time, Eric Gardner, that situation happened too. And I was, um, at the time I was filming a documentary on, on um, guns in America, it's called The Culture. Yep. And I was talking about inner city crime and stuff. So I was filming a lot of protests and things like that. Um, so, you know, I, I, remember, I remember vividly those protests, especially in Boston when they're blocking the highway and stuff like that. The difference is now is, is now that it, it was a lot of talk, it was a lot of anger, but policy is being changed. And, and things such as defunding the police is real. I mean, just look at New York and what they did. I mean, e even here in Brockton, they didn't defund the police, but they held back overtime by $200,000. You know, now granted, they can go back to the council and ask for that money again, but these are things that policy is not being changed. Even with the president, um, you know, just, just this signing an order of recommendations of uh, banning chokeholds, and now it's, they're incentivizing different grants if they follow these recommendations, they will get a grant. If they don't, you know, they won't and so on. So I think it's a perfect storm between, we have a pandemic, everyone's cooped up in the house and paying attention now, okay? So that's a perfect storm. We have a president, whether you like him or not, um, invo invokes emotion on either side. So there's emotion to do something with this president. Um, and, 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 and you have the, the painful, slow death of George Floyd. So it was a, watching a painful death of eight minutes and 46 seconds, watching a pandemic of this whole country where everyone's paying attention and having a president that sparks emotion on both sides. So now you're, we're finally seeing policy change, which is different. With Mike Brown, we didn't see policy change. We weren't talking about defunding police. However, Black Lives Matter started, but now we're at a point where it's, it's dictating some policy now, you know, you, you have, you know, you know, politicians such as, you know, AOC and, 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 and different people who are really pushing for different policy changes and it's happening. So that's, I think, is, is the big difference with now. But so I would ask you, is there an anti-law enforcement sentiment to these recent rounds of rallies and protests sure absolutely i think there's some anti i mean and and i can't blame people for the anger we need to be smart about it for the people who say we don't need the police okay particularly the hood i think it's pretty dumb okay um but i i do feel like people are angry that listen you know black people are not making this stuff up about being mistreated and things, you know. So, so this, this, it's natural to be angry. And if you think no one's going to be angry and have some sentiment about police, you know, you might be a little naive about that. But I do think that we got to channel that anger in the right direction. Okay. Um, so, you know, it's funny the word defunding police, Kevin. I actually think it's a wrong word. I think it's not. It's not defunding. It's reallocating money. You know, what, if you, I think defunding is a horrible word because we can't defund the police to zero. That's just not smart. That's, that's not good for anybody, okay? 
So especially the older I get, <laughs> the, the, you know, the, I guess the more fiscally conservative you get and, you know, more conservative about different things. But when we talk about defunding the police, I think what it means is if there's a, if there's a drug overdose, you don't necessarily need a police officer there. You might just need an EMT. Okay. That's policing smarter. That's using, putting cameras on, 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 on different lights where you don't need a traffic stop all the time. So that interaction between police and people is limited. That way the police can actually spend more time on the hardcore issues that they need to focus on. Like, you know, the, the drug problem, the, the, the you know, gang problem, so on and so forth. So it's actually policing smarter. But the word defund has such a negative connotation. I don't know who thought of that word because I don't think it's defunding. I think it's just reallocating. It's just policing smarter. You know, for example, listen, I'm a TV production person. DVDs were kind of the thing. Before that, it was tapes. Okay, let's do something a little smarter. Let's do DVDs, which is cheaper. Now let's do something even smarter. Let's use chips. Is that defunding TV? That's just being smarter. So I think we were kind of, you know, using the wrong words and everyone can't be all offended about defunding. Let's actually listen to what people are saying on both sides. Don't be the crazy liberal that thinks every police officer is the second coming of Stalin. And don't be the crazy conservative that thinks every black person is, is a part of the clips and, and, and bloods. Let's just think rationally here. And I think we have an opportunity to do so. So social media, I, I think social media can be such a useful tool, but it can also be so divisive. And during a lot of, since we became a woke or we've become woke in regards to George Floyd, um, what happened to him, and uh, what a lot of the folks around the country are doing in regards to seek change. Mm -hmm. There has become a little bit of a divide. There are those people who, who, want, who want to seek change, and you're right, reallocate should be the, be the word, not defund the police. But what it's drawn up is, is, is um, kind of a, a front, a, a, there's a you know, like with a war, there's a front. That's where the that's where the battles are happening. You know, that's where the main skirmish is. Um, and Black Lives Matter is one of those groups that's at the forefront, looking to invoke um, policy change when it comes to systematic racism. Um, but then there are other people who are pro law enforcement, and they are the, the blue lives blue lives people who say, well, blue lives matter. Um, do you feel that some people, and again, I'm asking you just as an, as an opinion type thing, you as being an observant individual, do you feel that, that there's a, a negative connotation to the Black Lives Matter versus Blue Lives Matter argument? Right. Well, I, I think, um, I mean, I, I understand the perspective of, of, you know, Blue Lives Matter, but it's also saying blue lives. I mean, I mean the, it, it, this, this don't say, I mean, you know, a police officer, that, that's not a, that's not a color, you know, that's, that's a job. You know, you get, you, you don't get drafted to police officer. You volunteer for that. I didn't get drafted to be black. Mm. Okay. So I, I think this, this is a difference. Let me, let's give you a question. If you go to your wife or girlfriend, let's just say your wife or girlfriend says, Kevin, do you love me? And the year's father saying, honey, what are you talking about? I love everybody. I love all God's creatures. How do you think she's going to feel about that? No. She wants to know I love you. Okay, that's, the, and that's how I see Black Lives Matter. We you know, oh, all lives matter. I know, we understand that, but this is a particular, this is something that's, that's, that's different. I think, um, I, 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 I think when it comes to Black Lives Matter, I, I, I think people are, are having a hard time separating the group Black Lives Matter from literally the same Black Lives Matter. You know, I, I, I think there's a difference. You know, Black Lives Matter when it comes to not just with police officers killing Black men, it, it, it applies to Black Lives Matter in terms of equal opportunity for education, equal opportunity for housing, equal opportunity when it comes to Black on Black crime, Black Lives Matter, 
I, I, I think people need to kind of get that mindset of, for some reason, when they think of Black Lives Matter, they're thinking of Antifa, and they're thinking of these, all these different things. That's not really what it is. All this is spreading awareness to an issue that, hey, there's a problem going on and needs to be addressed. I think police officers and I have law enforcement in my family need to stop being so damn offended. To be quite frank with you, I, I think police officers and white men are too offended when talking about this issue and it blinds them from actually seeing the reality. I think that's a God's on truth. So I think, um, I, I think for any liberal to say that officers are not needed, I think are idiots, okay? Um, and, 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 that's, and that's a conversation when you started like that, there's no progress being made. But when police officers immediately get offended, when you talk about Black Lives Matter, that's a problem too. That's a problem too. And, and we just, you know, I don't think Black people are making this up when it comes to how they feel about police. Kevin, I'm 31, own my own place, relatively successful. And when I see a police officer, I get nervous. And I have nothing to hide. I just get nervous. You know, imagine how, and I have friends in the police department. I have, you know, friends, I guess, in high places that, you know, I, I can make a phone call to. Imagine how a teenager feels, okay, who's black and, and sees all this stuff in the news. That perception, whether right or wrong, is reality. So th that's a real feeling that people need to acknowledge. I would ask you, but and then I would follow up and, and ask you this. We've referenced Michael Brown. We've, we, you know, the, the, you know, the, the newest victim to the conversation is George Floyd. Um, Freddie Gray, you know, the individual who, who suffered injuries while being arrested by Baltimore police in 2015. Just uh, some examples, national examples. But some of the things that I've seen here locally when, uh, you know, there was, there's been local rallies that have been held and if someone promotes that there's going to be a rally uh, the first thing that that folks who are pro police or pro blue lives matter will reference the name sean gannon and michael chesna and these are two police officers who were killed in the line of duty and so there's kind of like okay we know you know police officers lives are also on the line as well, what do you say in regards to those families who lost a loved one who served um, in the law, you know, in the line of being a law enforcement officer? I think, um, you know, as I was talking about this in our police documentary, I think police officers and black men have so much more in common than people think. Okay, because most black men are peaceful people who just want to do good in their lives. Same thing police officers. But there's always that 0.1% that blows in and messes up for everybody. The difference is a police officer can take off their uniform. A black person can't. That's the difference. And I, I think, you know, I think it's very important that a police officer is not a police officer 24-7, 365. A black man is okay. So I, I think I, I, I think um, you know the the officer's job is it. That's probably one of the toughest jobs in this country, and it's a job where the fact of the matter is you're not a firefighter. You come in more than likely for a situation. Someone's going to be angry at you. Someone's going to be mad. And it's going to be dangerous. Um, I think we got to be sensitive to that. Um, I think we are sensitive to that. And the people who are not, shame on them. Okay. But I, 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 think, I think that's the crux of the issue is that officers who go into a line of duty, they sign up for the job. Okay, they sign up for the job. Um, and black people don't. I, I think that's, that's the biggest difference. Not, not in, 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 and we pray that they can come home and everyone can come home to their family every single day. But I think if we talk about the difference, that's the difference. You know, I'm a teacher too. I, I pride myself being a film teacher. If I have a student who says something inappropriate, I can't go back and say, well, F you. No, I'm a teacher. I've got to hold myself to a higher standard. No matter how wrong that student may be, I have to hold myself to a higher standard because that's my job. And that's what I signed, that, that's what I signed up for. So I, I think that's, that's, that, that's, the, that's the big difference.
it's been a really, this has been a great conversation that you and I have had Just a couple more questions before we, we, we wrap up. I, I would like to touch base on the statute thing at, at some point too. I, I think why, why, why don't you touch upon that? Because, because that seems to be the, 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 the latest movement where we are changing history because if individuals who, who have been uh, memorialized, who have been remembered via statute, but then it's found out that in their history that somehow they had something to do with owning slaves or they were proponents for slavery, um, we, we see what's going on in regards to the Confederate flag as a sign of change. G give me your thoughts on taking these statues down. Is there a need to do that? Well, I, I think the Confederate statues need to go down because um, I, I think it's anti-American. Um, but if they go down, if, if they stay up, they go down, here's, here's what needs to happen. And everyone's going to uproar about these statues. I can see the sentiment of wanting them to take down. I personally think Confederate statues need to come down. But it doesn't mean much unless you don't change the history of us. It doesn't mean much. I think that's more important than taking down the statues. You know, you take down a statue, you feel good for about, what, five minutes? But the history is still there. I think the history books need to tell the whole story. You know, listen, America has a bad history, and they have a great history. America's done some really good things. And they've done some bad things. So has every other civilization. Okay? We all have some dirt on us. Okay? Black people in Africa have some dirt on them too. They had slaves in Egypt. Hate to break it to you, black people. Okay? There's some bad history. But it's, been, it's told, though. It's not told in American history. You know, we were, we're so quick to talk about Malcolm X and how he went to jail and everything. But we're not quick to talk about Thomas Jefferson owning slaves. I mean, let's just tell the whole story here. Let's tell the whole story. You know, I, I'm, I'm, you know, let, let's, I think taking down the statues will feel good. Hey, we'll feel good for a little bit. But are you really changing things? I'm just a fan of being truthful. We're media people, Kevin. You know, when I do my documentaries, you know, I, I cut through all the BS here. Let's just tell the truth. Okay, whether you like me or not, the truth will be told. So I, I think the truth is told about you know, African Americans in, in Africa and, and even Egyptians and slaves and so on and so forth, which is need to be told, and that's appropriate. Well, let's tell the true story about our founding fathers. They did some really good things. They did some great things. I mean, the 13th, the 14th, and 15th Amendment, um, and Abraham Lincoln, awesome things. Mm. Let's not act like everyone's the second coming of Mother Teresa here. Let's tell the whole, let's tell the whole story. But does that mean, okay, so we're pulling down statues here in America. Should this go global? Should we start dismantling the, the, the pyramids which were built on the backs of slaves? I mean, that's, that's a great point. And then the, that, that's my concern, is that if we take on a statue, are we really changing history? No. Whether you like it or not, the Confederacy was part of American history. So I just think that needs to be told in the, in the history books in terms of our leaders. You know, I, I'll, I'll never forget, you know, elementary school, one of, my, one of my friends said, Thomas Jefferson, you know, they're talking about how great Thomas Jefferson was with the Louisiana Purchase and all the great things he did for the country. And then um, one of my friends at the time in elementary school, he said, didn't Thomas Jefferson own slaves? And my teacher responded by saying, yes, but he also freed a lot of slaves too. Oh, oh, good for you, Thomas. Good for you. You're a good person. <laughs> I mean, let's tell the whole story here. You know, so um, I think it's a great point. I mean, pyramids were building back of slaves. They were you know, this is, and, and that story is told. You know that, Kevin. But a lot of people don't know that these presidents were slave owners. Mm. So the African history is told. You know, the good, the, 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 the bad. You know, and the good in terms of the Egyptians and obviously the, uh, the accomplished. Well, we really taught all the American history. Let's just be fair here. Mm. Good point. Okay. Um, one of my final questions, what, in your opinion, what needs to be discussed to continue forward progress when it comes to a changing systemic racism? I think um, the change, it comes down to, the, I, I think, and it's happening, no matter what you feel about this president, okay, he did sign a, an order about criminal justice reform, okay, that was starting the Obama administration, in, administration but uh, President Trump finished it. Um, I think that's huge right there. 
You know, so we're talking about systematic racism. I think that needs to change. And the criminal justice aspect and education. Those are two new fights. Those are two civil, the, 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 um, civil, the civil rights movement in terms of now is education and criminal justice. Okay, let me just give you quick examples. When people in the community were dying in the suburban community of opioids, okay, they were getting help, which they should be getting help. That's the right thing to do. Black people were thrown in jail. Okay, when we talk about marijuana, they're being thrown in jail. Now it's legal and white people are owning those companies. Meanwhile, the black people are still in jail over that. So that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a systematic change that needs to happen. That's number one. Number two is education. That's really the true, that, 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 that's, the, that, that, that's the true way to really achieve freedom is, is being able to educate yourself and not just education to the college, trades, uh, so on and so forth. So I think those two fights, um, and Frederick Douglass, you know, one of the reasons why he was so respected is because he could read, uh, he could write, he was educated. He didn't have the formal education, but that allowed him to have the respect to, to do different things. Martin Luther King, I mean, I mean, you think of anyone who's made some type of significant progress during times of, of, uh, of terrible situations, the education is the, is the one that got them out of it. We're fortunate to be able to sit down and have a, a conversation with you because right now you are semi-locked into documentary mode. You are behind the camera. You're putting your piece thing together, your next masterpiece. I am you is in production right now. Well, what is the focus of this film? Focus of this film is about immigration in America, but it's bigger than that. And the title, I think, really explains what I'm trying to do. Is ultimately, with all this uh, protest going on in this country, you know, we're seeing a big divide of everybody. And what I want to do is bring people together. So um, it's about immigration in America. And it's talking about, the, you know, some of the different policies that we have in the the most, two most controversial things in this country right now is police and, and immigration. So we attack police and now we're going to attack immigration. And I just want, um, we're going to focus on the issue of immigration. Okay, picture immigration as a cup in the middle of the table. And we're having different people talking about how they see that cup in the middle of the table, how we've seen it from uh, someone who's a DACA student, someone who's an angel mom. Angel moms are, are um, our mothers who've had their sons and daughters killed by illegal immigrants. We're going to talk to them. We're going to talk to the person, such as myself, who was, who had parents who was immigrants, who are now, our parents are immigrants who me, you know, the first generation born in this country. How do they feel about, about the issue and struggles they went through? And then we're going to talk about African Americans, okay, the forced immigrants in this country. And some people feel that immigrants have gone past them in this country. Um, so we're going to talk about that as well. So it's going to be very controversial like we always do. It's going to be very uncomfortable. But it's going to be honest and it's going to be fair. Well, you know, like, like a, a new pair of shoes, you know, first few times you pop it on, it is going to be uncomfortable until you break it in and get used to having that conversation, free-flowing conversation. Uh, if folks want to stay on top of your latest projects and some of the things that you're doing at Newbie Productions, how can they do that? Best way is newbieproductions.com, um, N-O-U-B-E, productions.com. As you can see my logo behind my, my, my shoulder. Um, newbieproductions.com, and you know, we're, I'm, in, I'm filming full-time now. Um, like I said before, I'm a teacher, so I have the ability to have the summers off. Hopefully we'll be back in school in September. Um, but I'm focusing full-time the documentary between now and, and September. Well, we thank you very much for your time and for the conversation and we'll look forward to having you back on for more conversation and i want to thank you the viewer at home for tuning into programs like this one again the idea is to have those conversations to better inform you whether it's a comfortable subject or an uncomfortable conversation it's just as uncomfortable for me to to talk about some of these topics but the idea is first to have the conversation and try to get to a better place with it by better inform informing everybody. So uh, I want to thank a newbie and I want to thank you for tuning in. And if you have any uh, suggestions for future guests, info at abingtoncam.tv is the way to do it. And until next time, have a good day.